Hey, good Tuesday afternoon. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather with your latest weather yield outlook here. We're doing it a day early this week because tomorrow we have our growing season webinar that we would love for you all to attend. Uh, it is free to attend. You can go to bamwx.com slash webinar and sign up. We're going to have all kinds of really neat research for the webinar tomorrow. Um, and hundreds and hundreds of you have uh, have registered already. It's a huge, it's our biggest growing season webinar registration ever so far. Um, and we'll probably easily get into the thousands on that. So get in there, check it out, and uh, get registered for it. Uh, guys, for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over um, the latest thought process here. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, Michael Clark, co-founder, CEO here of BAM Weather. And uh, we're going to do these weekly, all year long. Uh, they're picking up traction. It's fun. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to get the latest. We're going to talk about planting delays to continue. Um, and an interesting note I want to make uh, real quick here is we've had some folks reach out and talking about um, how the emergence is so high where the, the plant progress is behind. Folks that, that got planted already, that planted early, they're reaping the benefits of this pattern. All right, the, the the warm pattern, the rainfall. If you got planted early, um, we have a lot of our customers letting us are telling us they're in a really nice spot right now with the warmth and the rain early on. Um, so uh, maybe some explanation to that there. If you are in the ground already, that can that's 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 a big plus for you. If not, let's talk about it. It's warm now. It's cooler next week. The June pattern probably starts active. La Nina uh, continues to develop. Uh, latest uh, summer outlooks and yield forecast as well. This is the thought process for plant delays to continue. Updated map here this morning. Uh, if anything, in the week two time frame, getting later into this week into week two, there is potential for rain in here. The interesting thing is that, though, a, a lot of folks have been able to do some things here because it's actually been drier. So just keep that in mind, that general area there. Uh, it, it has been okay lately. Where we're really concerned, guys, for the, to, the, this this to kind of continue uh, to be a problem is certainly here east uh, and absolutely here down into the deep south with just continued chances of rain. I mean, we're even seeing that today. So we kind of labeled here continued delays across the central north plains, considerable delays, significant delays the further south and east that you go, becoming more favorable in here and warmer too. Some big, some big uh, warm conditions are going to start working in. Big heat signals working in down there. Okay, so getting into this, let's take a look at kind of just you know where we're going here uh, uh, with the next 24 hours. We do have rainfall across the area. This is a, a snapshot of radar here from the Clarity radar. Rain across most of the Eastern Belt, Missouri, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and even some locally heavier rains are going to be likely here just over the course of the next 24 hours. European model showing where the heaviest rains are going to be centered here uh, just over the next day or so. And and right now we, we are anticipating that to be uh, across portions of Indiana. Uh, into Illinois, Kentucky, and over here uh, towards eastern Tennessee. And then another area here of potentially locally or heavier rain across uh, western Minnesota and the central portions of South Dakota. And maybe even a little bit of heavy rain here in the short term across central Kansas. That will be welcomed as well here going forward. Now, taking a look at things, the last 30 days, this is the percent of average precipitation here over the last 30 days. And you can see, for the most part, generally the ag regions here have been overall very wet. I know we have a little bit of a bubble here in central Indiana. Some people might argue that from the data. Regardless, it's overall been a very wet pattern, especially across the western and northwestern third of the Corn Belt. Some folks running 200% of the normal. But it's, it's, it's also been very warm. So my point to the earlier statement of the emergence and, and, and how it's so, you know, so much further along is, is likely due to the fact of how warm it's been, especially in the eastern belt, and uh, the, the rainfall that we've had. It's, it's, it's making things nice that are already in the ground. Uh, but there's a lot of, we're 5% high uh, behind in the corn planting progress, and we're 1% above in soybean progress. This is interesting. Look here since March 1st. Look how warm it's been. Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, really the, the about the third to fourth warmest stretch since March 1st now through through May 13th since 1893. That's uh, 
notable. That's significant warmth here to start the growing season, start the planting season, really, if you will, um, across Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, portions of West uh, Virginia, West Virginia as well. Even central Michigan running in the, the fifth to sixth uh, warmest stretch there since March 1st. The precipitation ranks, it's been the wettest thus far. Um, big, big precip replenishment going on across Iowa, southern Minnesota, portions of Nebraska, and um, Missouri as well. You can kind of see uh, really where it's been the wettest in terms of, of ranks, if you will, uh, from, from you know, just a standpoint of, of historical uh, patterns here, definitely down in East Texas and, and uh, Louisiana as well. You can see some of the spots here running. Gosh, you could argue if you averaged all these together, maybe it's uh, 15th wettest stretch of all time or something, you know, if you wanted to if you wanted to go that route. But some places have been very, very wet there since March 1st. Where it has not been wet and where rainfall is certainly welcomed is central and western Kansas and the t panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, out of 132 years, ranked 125th for the driest stretch in southwest Kansas since 1893, is certainly nothing to bat an eye at. It's been dry down there. The next seven days, there is some potential for rain. The better chances here for southwest Kansas, or for Kansas, unfortunately, look to fall in the eastern portions of Kansas. The next seven days, we're looking at the best concentration of rainfall to be east Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, or the Tennessee River Valley and uh, Ohio River Valley, if you will, <clears throat> where some of the best rainfall chances are centered. A lot of this is coming from today here, of course, as well, with that low pressure center circulating here over the eastern belt. Some uh, scattered rain chances in here for sure. And then uh, decent rain chances here in the, in the southern Canadian prairies as well. All right. That's about an inch, inch and a half of rain. The red is where two inches or more is favored. But you can see where there's dry slots here, too, especially in the western part of the belt where it looks to be less active, at least the next seven days. Week two rainfall. All right, if you watch the weather yield shows here uh, two weeks ago, what we said was that it could get less active in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, points north and east at end of May. That's not really working out right now. All right, we did say the central U.S., the Corn Belt, would stay active and very wet. All right, so half of our outlook was looking okay there. Um, now, I will say our weeks three and four or our 16 to 30 day outlook products have been very good. They've been wet really for the last several weeks. Um, so if you started early, you're watching those outlooks and that helped you, that's great. You know, watch those outlooks, keep an eye on those. The area that I missed two weeks ago for a drier end of May, I circled was about right in through here. I said at the end of May, it could get drier. Right now, the week two European is just complete opposite of that. It's wetter. I own that. I understand that. It's just trended wetter there. This particular area we said would stay wet and stay active. That's been the case. That's going to be the case. It's going to continue to go. The only place you're looking to get less active or a reprieve is, is like we said in the outlook map is somewhere in here where you might start to see things slow down a little bit in the rainfall department. But week two, nonetheless, this is an active look uh, for most of the country. Okay. Um, it's really, except for the deep South, all right, where you're not going to be as active. Here's a look at the 10 day, one inch plus rainfall probabilities. If you're in the, the, uh, dark reds here, you know, the maroon color, if you will, uh, this is basically where you're a 90% probability or higher of rainfall to exceed an inch of rain over the next 10 days. Okay. Uh, higher probabilities here really too. It's not, it's not as high, but across North, uh, the Dakotas and Northwest Minnesota, some 70, 80% probabilities at an inch or rain, uh, an inch of rain or more, two inches, heavy stuff, right? Uh, the probabilities here are maxed out across the uh, Gulf coast. All right. For two inches of rain or more the next 10 days. But then look up here, look across the Eastern belt here, uh, Southern Indiana, uh, into Kentucky, into Virginia, here into Ohio. Decent probability, 60, 70% 60, probabilities of rain two inches or more the next 10 days. Okay. Now, with that said, temperatures, they'll continue to run a little bit warmer than average week one across majority of the belt, uh, normal to slightly above average temperatures. The front moves through after all this weather moves out and it gets cooler. It's definitely a cooler into May from normal 
warmer to the south, you kind of cut the southern third of the U.S. growing region in half. You see it's very warm down south, and it's much cooler here across Iowa, Minnesota, and the Dakotas for week two. Okay, In the 16 to 30 day, let's talk about rainfall in the extended forecast, the 28th of May through the 10th of June. Right now, guys, the end of May into June continues to run dry. Uh, we, uh, again, all along, we thought it would stay pretty wet in here. We really have. Again, where we where we where we missed it, really kind of in here. It's drier up in here. I mean, up into Canada, but you know, we were expecting it to get a little bit drier in here. It hasn't. We've yet to see that happen. Uh, overall, though, regardless, this pattern uh, looks to run active and wet here uh, as we get late May into early June, especially into Missouri. Um, Western Tennessee, Kentucky, Southern Illinois, Indiana, sweet spot here potentially for above normal rainfall. Drier, below normal rains, unfortunately, southwest Kansas, Panhandles, Texas, Oklahoma, the desert southwest looks to run drier, okay, in that time frame. In the uh, June rainfall department for the month of June, what we see here is a uh, really overall a signal for above normal precip, okay, to continue. What may happen is at some point in June, we may see the development of a southern U.S. ridge. A high pressure system perhaps develops. Flow pattern gets active over the top. Storm clusters, northwest flow pattern, thun and thunderstorm clusters would, be, would become over the top of that, and above normal precip would prevail. That's the thought process for June precip right now, um, and that may be what happens. Now, there is some indications that the second week of June, maybe into the beginning of the third week, it could calm down and be less active. But overall, I think June bodes uh, above normal precipitation for the majority of the growing regions. We look at 16 to 30 day temps, we can see what I'm talking about. Note down here across Texas, deep south, much above normal, some significant heat in the cards down here, no question. All right, warmer across the eastern belt into the east and the northeast but cooler to the west and to the northwest. The June temperature pattern will start to moderate, but again, I want you to keep in mind there could be a few flexes here, especially late in the month and into July, where this ridge expands and temperatures get pretty intense at times. Um, especially into July, this is probably going to expand northward. All right, keep that pattern active too. All right, so real quick, Weekly Enzo data. What are we seeing? What's the what's the the temperature of the water doing going from El Nino to La Nina there in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean? Right now, uh, here here's our our closest years watching that that uh, variable. This is this is right here is 2024 right now. You can kind of see where we're going. We're getting below now the El Nino value, and we're tracking with years getting into here. A lot of these years started to go into La Nina. It's, it's tough to make that out, but sometime into, uh, gosh, here, if I could, if it's tough for me to see that image. I'm going to pull that image up so I can uh, better better uh, view that for you. Let's see, into, yeah, Ju July, the first to second week of July. That's right in through here. My apologies in here. We start to see this, this happen here. The majority of these other years really start to fall into August. Regardless, all the years we're tracking close to right now fall into La Nina. Those years are years like 95, 98, 07, 10, 16, 20. You see those down there at the bottom. What I'll do is I'll expand this one real quick. This is the temperature pattern for the summer. All right, you can see that right here. Uh, overall, guys, we anticipate a very warm summer. In fact, from a cooling degree standpoint, cooling degree day standpoint, probably the second warmest summer of all time. But we are expecting some significant heat waves at times here for summer and some big nighttime low temperature departures, being very warm at night. All right. For precipitation, I'll turn this pattern, I'll turn this up here real quick. Again, I think there can be spells of big southern U.S., central U.S. ridges. Okay. Now, I do think at times that can allow for an active Gulf Coast hurricane season is going to be a big hurricane season this year. I think there can be some southwest flow into Texas. But the flow pattern across the top of this high pressure system, uh, these big ridges can be big storm clusters, severe weather, and potentially a duratio or two is not out of the question uh, overall. So these analogs suggest a few things. What they suggest is the corn yield to be potentially 
uh, almost two points below trend. Years like 95, 2010, 2011, and 2020 bode below normal yields. The other thing that's interesting that I want to point out here is 2016 is a yield analog right now. It is a weather analog. The issue with 2016 is that a lot of the Pacific Ocean analogs do not line up. It may fall behind. Uh, we, may not, we may not have this one on our side, which would even lower this further. So the idea here, potentially with late planting, storm clusters, excessive moisture, warm nighttime temperatures, hot, a couple of heat waves, right now could, could mean that the yields are not looking to be a big above trend yield right now. In the soybean department, it could be a little bit better, all right? But regardless, it's not forecast to be a huge uh, spike above. We're, we're, we're flirting. If we take 16 out of this, we're flirting with bringing that below trend. The big thing we're concerned about a couple, that we're seeing right now, especially in the year like uh, 1995, August got very dry. If you recall my video last week, uh, the big ridge develops over the central U.S., what happens is, is in active hurricane seasons, you can have that ridge migrate northward into August and September across the North Plains into the Great Lakes. And that's when we start to see the hurricane activity um, come in. But we shut the precip off late summer. There's dry risks late summer that we have to keep in mind. These are our analogs right now for June, July, and August. The core of the heat, especially July and especially into August, can center itself right over the growing regions okay it starts here and kind of it starts here in june and that ridge may start to to creep northward into july and into august based on that research and it can keep summer wet in june and july for sure with an active flow pattern and thunderstorm clusters but into august is where we would want to get concerned that this area here into august could turn drier as that ridge situates itself further northward and the Gulf heats up and some big tropical storm or, or strong hurricane threats could come into the mix here by that time. We're gonna dive into this more. I wanna encourage you to register for the webinar. It is tomorrow at 11 a.m. We've got a bunch more research, a lot of really neat things to talk about in there. Um, so bamwx.com slash webinar to sign up. We would love to see you join that. Uh, and, and check it out. If you are not following us on YouTube, make sure to do that because we're going to continue to issue these videos weekly, keep you all posted on the thought process of the growing season and uh, just what we're watching here as we get further into the season. So thank you for watching. If you find any value in the video, post it on your pages, on your X accounts, on your Facebooks, tag a friend, send it to a friend and have a great week, guys. Talk to you soon.